Bonjour à tous. Welcome back to our course about the French luxury industry. And today, in this topic, we will see together the uh, French luxury brand in Asia and notably in China. Well, as we seen before in the previous lesson, that for the years of 2020, there is a typical V-shaped rebound in the global luxury market. But in this chart, in this graphic, what you have to notice is in the bottom right. China accounted 90% of the market growth in 2019. Even in the crisis, even in the deepest crisis of the global luxury market, Chinese consumer buy. They are still buying Western luxury brain. And so they represent a very, very important essential part in the global luxury market. Chinese clients are very important client for Western luxury power houses. This is the meaning of this chart. And in this chart, we can see that uh, either by customer nationality or by geography, Chinese customer represent a very essential part in the global luxury market. And this importance and this part is going to grow. It's going to become more and more important. So Western luxury powerhouses must pay attention to Chinese client. Well, according to the resources coming from uh, mainland China, China is the growing market of luxury good. So as you can see on this graphic, on this chart, that in the year 20. 12, the Chinese client, the Chinese luxury market consumption represent only 19% in the world. As you can see on the graphic, in 2025, the Chinese market of luxury goods will occupy 40% in the global market, luxury market uh, volume. So Chinese market is becoming more and more important, more and more huge, so more and more influential. And uh, according to some survey made by Chinese luxury uh, consulting group, we have to take in into account the factor of age. So how do we read these graphics? These graphics represent how generation, how age will influence consumption of luxury goods. In the middle, you can, you can see those post-80s, ho, those people born in the 1980s. So who are they? Those post 80 are now 40 years old. So these generation represent essential part in the uh, general population. They, uh, they are many, they are numerous, and they are rich. So they buy more. So as you can see on the bottom, uh, those post 80 generation, they represent more than 50% of annual luxury spending because they are uh, they are rich, they are capable of spending, they have money, they can buy. But what do we have to pay attention to on these graphic is the generation post-90s. You. You are the future generation. You are the future client for these luxury brands. So these luxury brands should notice what do you think, what do you like, because that will determine what will you buy. So even for the present time, though the generations of post 90s, uh, who are they? They are those uh, persons who are aged uh, between 20 you and uh, 30 years old. Even though they occupy only 28% in the uh, in the general uh, Chinese population and they represent only 23% in the uh, annual spending of luxury goods. But these are, you are the future client for these luxury brands. So they definitely have to study what do you think, what is in your head, what is your profession, what is your uh, habitude, what is your habit, because all these will influence what will you buy in the future when you become richer and richer. Okay, so here in this chart, we can clearly see uh, how behavior among different generation might differ. For the generation of post-65 and post-70s, brand. Brand is everything. So these Zhongguo Dama, these Azuma of 50 or 60 or even 70 years old, what's important for them? Brand. As long as there is the logo on the product I buy, so you know that uh, those Chinese Azuma, when they, go to, uh, when they go to Paris, they buy everything. Everything in the Gucci, everything in the Louis Vuitton, 
I buy it. Put it in my, uh, put them in my bag. This is for the uh, generation of post 65 and post 70. But what about you? On the chart, you can see that for the generation of the post 90s, brain, well, it's important, but design, style, does the style, is my style, does the style of this brain, does the design of the style correspond to my personal style or my personal taste? That will make decision different. Fabric, material, sustainability, and production process. Does it waste uh, water? Does it waste electricity? Uh, is it uh, ecologically dangerous for the environment? Because environment sustainability is the awareness very important for the generation of post 90s. And these are factors that will influence their purchasing tender, uh, train. So luxury brand in China, uh, according to Daniel Langer, CEO of this consulting group, uh, Etiquette, according to him, within the next few years, China will account for more than 50% of all luxury purchases. Generation Z is rapidly changing the preference structure of luxury consumption. So French culture enables a long-term vision of brains focusing on systematic brain equity building. Means that French brain, they know that you, Generation Z, you are changing the world. You are changing the luxury market. So why French powerhouses can occupy the top two on the global top 10 luxury brand? It is because French people, they know that they have to change. Unlike the many short-term pro uh, profit-driven approaches in the US. Okay, so uh, this is the, an article that I found on the um, internet uh, written by a Chinese analyst about the uh, luxury market. According to this observer, she wrote something about the Generation Z. According to him, in the global market, in the world, uh, there are only 10% of the luxuries uh, uh, spending are made by the Generation Z. But in China, Generation Z account for 15% of the luxury spending. And the proportion, the part of the luxury uh, good consumption made by the Generation Z might occupy more than 20% of the uh, uh, for certain brand. Means that Generation Z in China, they will prefer some special brand. Not necessarily these very prestigious traditional, conventional powerhouse, but maybe some new star. I know that a young person today, you have more tendency to visit the so-called concept store. So Generation Z might prefer these trend store rather than this very prestigious uh, brain. And uh, so we know that uh, Generation Z refer to the generation born between 1990 and 20. So these are people who are aged between 20 to 25 or even 30. So that's why these people call as Jiu Wu Ho and Ling Ling Ho. And according to this uh, uh, observer, until 2035, Generation Z, when you, when you become 40 years old, you will become richer and your spending on luxury market will represent 40% in the global luxury uh, market. So definitely, these luxury brands, they must know how to uh, sell product to you, uh, the generation. So luxury brands should start to changing their own mindset. Do you remember Emily in Paris? So that is a conflict between the new school and the old school. And the new school, well, uh, because in the old school, what they pay attention to is exclusiveness. It is so, so, so expensive that as long as I possess something, that made me happy. But young people, generation, you are not so rich. So these campaign, those advertisement is, uh, won't touch you. They won't influence you. But you are the future client of the, of the luxury market. So these luxury brands, today, they have to be inclusiveness, engaging, and have an open manner. The key to attract this generation Z is to become your friends, to participate in your lives through relevant channels, through Instagram, and speak in your language. Not only language, uh, verbal language, but also mind language. They got to know how to communicate with the uh, generation Z. 
So this is something that very interesting that I found on the internet that talk about the uh, generation gap in Korea because Korea is also a very important market in Asia. So millennials and Generation Z, what's in their mindset? FOMO, feeling of lagging behind others because FOMO stands for fear of missing out. You don't want to be, uh, miss out. As long as your friends uh, have something, you also want to have the same thing. Recently, uh, what I see in the campus in Furen, every young girl dress them up exactly in the same style as, as these Korean pop stars. So, uh, because you definitely, you are fear of missing out. Second, YOLO. You only live once. I only have one life. I, I'm, I'm young only once. So, spend. So, buy. So, purchase. I want to be happy in my life because I, want, uh, I can only live once, YOLO. So FOMO and YOLO, these are factors that will influence the, uh, the mindsets of uh, Generation Z. So um, in this page, you can see that Taiwanese uh, consumer buy, Japanese consumer buys, uh, Korean uh, consumer buys. You, here you can see the ranking of these Western luxury brand in Korea. And you can see that in the level zero, Level zero means the top. The top of the top for Korean young girl, uh, young generation is Hermes. But Hermes, just 10 or 20 or 30 years ago, Hermes is the brand for Azuma. Uh, only 50, 60 uh, uh, years old uh, generation, they possess the, uh, the money to buy Hermes. But Hermes, they also have some sub-brand so that you, young generation, you can buy Hermes sub brain, but in the future, you will, a uh, Korean consumer, when they become 30 or 40 years old, they will definitely buy Hermes because Hermes is at the top of the top in the ranking uh, of the uh, Korean uh, people. So Asian market are being studied by all the, those consulting groups. So uh, according to these consulting groups, uh, even for the uh, luxury market, they have to pay attention to political uncertainty and the cultural differences. These are variables. These are factors that will influence global luxury market purchasing uh, habit too. And they clearly notice that Asian cultures are distinct, uh, distinct. They are different. But the problem is that even though they know that it is important to understand the middle class consumer, Chinese, Taiwanese, Korean, Japanese, and so on, they know that it is important to study this market, the mindset of these, uh, these consumers. They know that culture is important. They know that political issue will influence the culture and culture will influence purchasing. They know this importance. But the problem is that even they know that, are they successfully interpret or understand Asian consumer? Not necessarily. So according to this uh, observer in Chinese, well, uh, definitely, uh, they are sensitive, they know that it is in, uh, important. They don't understand. Even they understand a little bit, they, but they, are, they cannot understand in depth the, uh, the Chinese culture. So uh, that's why uh, recently, uh, in this recent year, there are several marketing, uh, marketing crises. Dolce Gabbana, they want to please Chinese consumer. They want to present something interesting, amusing. They want to make fun. They want to make, uh, use some joke in their uh, campaign. But that turned out to be catastrophic because um, what they show on screen doesn't generate hate or disagreement in the Chinese market. And as you know that in 2020, 2021, the uh, incident of uh, Xinjiang, the political, uh, typically 100% uh, political issue will influence cotton market. And in the cotton market, uh, behind the cotton market, uh, beyond cotton market, there are brains using uh, uh, cotton from Xinjiang. And these uh, arouse uh, sanctions or uh, ban from uh, the uh, Chinese young consumer. And so we often said that all politics is politics, commerce is commerce, uh, fine, uh, luxury is luxury. No. 
definitely political issue will influence economy, will in influence market. Uh, so uh, you definitely need not only intercultural competences, but you also have to have international vision as well as area study knowledge to help you manage these kinds of crisis. For example, ASUS. Uh, ASUS is also some kind of a prestigious brain in computing, in information uh, product, in so-called th uh, 3C product. But during the Ukraine war, the Ukrainian uh, Minister of Commerce and Technology uh, points ex uh, ASUS that you have to say something. ASUS push, uh, pushes their limits of imagination. All right, do you think Russia has any limits? So a uh, Russian minister points uh, name ASUS precisely that you have to say something about the invasion of the Russian invasion. Otherwise, we will boycott SUS. So that is the reason why even uh, TSMC, the, the most important, the biggest uh, semiconductor producer here in Taiwan, we consider as uh, Hu Guo Shenzhen, the most important enterprise of semiconduction here in Taiwan. They want to engage a specialist specialized in politics. Why? Because everybody wants to have a Hu Guo Shenzhen. Everybody in the world American, Japan, Germany, France, uh, everybody want to have a, a Taiji Dian in their country because Taiji Dian make big money. So Taiji Dian, TSMC, they, they will hire several analysts so as to understand, to make an analysis, commercial analysis according to political crisis. So that is why political issue, understanding political opinion is also a very uh, important competence that you have to have uh, in the future. So uh, at the end, I would like to stress once again the uh, importance and meaning of this course. Why do we have to open this course? Because what you should know will influence what you can do in the future. What you should know, you've got to have critical reading and thinking skill. You must know how to think. You must know how to express in logic, in a scientific way. You've got to have the capacity to read and create visual data. And please stop saying that study, learning uh, foreign language and uh, foreign culture is useless. Culture, intercultural communication uh, competence is a very, very, very important competence that uh, you will have that will make you different from the others because intercultural multilingual com uh, communication skill will be your assets and because you will have a sense of being an international citizen, citizen in a social media age. You should know how to communicate with the future younger generation. For all these people, they are in high school or even in uh, junior high school, you must know how to communicate with them, with a global citizen com uh, coming from every uh, part of the world because they might be your client. If you want your client to buy your product, then you must understand th their mindset. You must uh, understand, you must know how to communicate in a very efficient way, in their language, in their verbal language, and also in their mind language. So that is the importance of this course. And these are internet references and resources I have found on internet and for the presentation. And these are resources that, that I use. So thank you very much for following this uh, series of courses and hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Au revoir.